Why hello there. You may have noticed just like me, it's getting a little warm outside. I had my GPUs in the basement, not the easiest place to cool them, but I have this sunroom attached to my house, surrounded by windows, you can't see the ones on the other side, but I got louvers made. This one here is an exhaust, and there's two on the other side that are intakes, and they replace windows. On this side, there's fans behind it, pulling air out, and this entire building is depressurized, and it'll pull air in through the intakes on the opposing side. A little loud in there, but let's go in, let's take a look. So it's currently under construction, and I'm starting to move the GPUs in. Got a few more of these racks to do. Got um, a rack of A2000s here. There's four rigs of 12 and a pair of two up there, total of 50 A2000s. We'll look at those in a bit. And I got 30, 70 rigs. Um, I got four eight-way rigs, well, three eight-ways and one with a few miscellaneous and 30-70s and stuff in it. And I'm building those out. I'll bring them up here when they're done. Currently working on some electrical miscellaneous. Still need to trim out around the windows, doors, and stuff like that, but not really a big deal. It's operational. Here we have a wall of fans. These are Sanyo fans, 12 volt, three amps. I could get you the specific model number if that's interesting. Here is one of the fans that are in there. That's the model number, right? Pretty chunky fans. Sanyo are my preferred fan brand. They work quite well. They're well balanced. They're reliable. They're efficient. These particular units seem to be well adapted for this application. And I'll give you a little in-depth look here. So this is a quarter inch thick acrylic plate, laser cut with the whole pattern and stuff to mount these. And I have little reinforcement plates here held, holding these bolts together with a little caulking. So this is pretty sturdy. And even when these fans are running full speed, it doesn't bow very much. And this is actually replacing one of these glass pieces, the sliding glass window. Um, it's pulled out and this is tucked into the lip. You can kind of see in there, there's a little bit of an air gap between there and the screen for the louver. Um, this is held in there actually entirely by friction. And this piece pulls out, this slides over, so you can get behind it to service, either remove a fan or clean the screen. Um, these run four in a row and the power runs all down. There's a pewter drum wire that snakes all the way up, connecting all these together temperature sensor just hanging there. I have dual HP common slot power supplies. These are 750 watt versions. And I have a custom PLC driven controller running them. I'll do a video more on this because this is actually pretty detailed, but it's a differential cooler. I couldn't find anything that would do this. And the whole purpose of it is to minimize the fan speed. So the fans run as slow as they can to save power and save airflow through the filters, through the building and also ensure that on cold days you don't overcool and you hopefully minimize the indoor humidity. As long as you always have a differential, the indoor humidity will be lower than outside, which hopefully will mean drying can occur. Um, and how it works is it'll target this differential primarily. And as long as this differential is satisfied and it's within the minimax temps, it's cool. But if the differential is exceeded, it'll continue to increase the fan speed until the differential is met. And if the indoor temperature goes below the minimum temperature, it'll ignore the differential and keep dropping the fan speed. Same for the max. If the indoor temperature exceeds the max, it'll keep putting the fan speed up until it hits either the max speed or the max temperature is met. And differentials are set, um, well, the deltas are set between up and down. So you could change how much effort, how much the controller wants to increase the fan speed versus decrease uh, independently. And there's little graphs and stuff like that. You go to the indoor temp, outdoor temp. I cleaned the fans a little earlier today, so there's a little wonky stuff going on. But you can see the fan speed was stable for, for some time. And um, yeah, it give you a little indoor versus outdoor, your differential and stuff like that. Your fan level commanded versus your fan level measure gives you various alarms and mechanical outputs if you want to have a buzzer or whatever, things like that. But we'll get more into that later. That's pretty advanced. Moving on, I custom made these little racks which hold the GPUs reasonably well. They're not perfect and they're not done right now. Uh, I still need to put the bars in here that hold the GPUs in place, but whatever. 
right here we have FTW 3 3070s and a pair of power supplies in the back I'll go to. This VGA cable is screwed up, but you get an idea. All right, so we'll look in the back of these guys. These cards are real chonky, so they stick out the back. I've got a pair of HP common slot power supplies over there, 750 watts. These are an unusual version. These are the 96% efficient models. Pretty hard to find. The HSTNS PL34. Um, little bracket hold them like that. And Parallel Miner X11 amp breakout boards, which I like other than I've had a lot of reliability issues with these and Parallel Miner has absolutely no support. So I wouldn't buy these. And in fact, I wouldn't buy anything from Parallel Miner. They've been really flaky to me. I've had several problems with their products, issues with connectors being reversed, things not working like advertised, and they never support it. They never care. They don't honor the warranty, and it's kind of a 30-day warranty bullshit anyway thing, so it's, it doesn't really matter, right? Anyways, moving on. For power, uh, I did these drops here with these iron boxes. Uh, these are cast and um, they're pretty beefy, you're magnetic, so it's nice you can put big magnets on them and stick them to here, I'll do that eventually. And I'm running NEMA 6-20 outlets. That's what they look like there, basically the standard North American outlet, but both prongs are sideways instead of being vertical. And that's 240 volts, 20 amps, um, SJOW wire, box fans behind the rigs, on low to help push the heat away from these because otherwise you get weird issues and it works okay but it runs a lot cooler with those. I'm gonna try to make ducting, see how well that works to have the air from the intakes get forced across the GPUs without these using that to save power because these will take uh, 60 watts or so a piece and there's gonna be a total of eight or nine in here so I could save power that way if I could get the ducting to work. When I get this all in place, I'll try that. Um, and I got A2000s over here. These are 12-way rigs with a fan thing that I make. Right, so this holds a fan in replacement of the stock IO shield back bracket. You know, instead of this, this is very restrictive and the internal fans are a little wimpy and these are power limited. Um, so what this means is you can have external fans that take the power from an external part rather than through the PCB. So you can save a little bit of power from your riser and going through your card. And of course, you combine that with a shunt mod and you can get these things to around 48, 49, 50 mega hash. Um, these lower temperatures, eh, 15, 20 degrees if you do um, thermal pads as well. And I haven't done the copper shim mod on these. I think I want to try that. This copper shim is supposed to reduce temperatures on the memory around 20 degrees by itself. Um, so this combined with that should be great. Core runs pretty hot on these, so you kind it in hot environments. You need something anyways. The memory temperatures aren't the only issue with these. They run a little hot. So unless you have a cold environment, you kind of need something on these, especially in large arrays. And I like these because uh, it pushes all the heat out the front. So for a rig like this, it works well. And um, you can see if the fans are working externally. It's easier to clean because I removed the internal fan. So you can kind of just blow air through the thing and push the dust and stuff out to the back. And I'll give you a review in my miner. This one's actually being tuned right now. I'm fiddling with it. so. The memory frequencies are a little low because I've been having cabling issues with these breakouts. Uh, a lot of issues with these. I got a set that were great. I got another set problems and problems. Really annoying. But I've been tuning the, with the memory frequency a little low to ensure that they're stable and I could swap the cables out as GPU start getting errors. So I uh, get those weeded out. But these are running pretty good. Same breakouts, same power supplies powered by the same NEMA 620s. Um, each one of these is its own circuit, of course. So these are run around 10 amps, around two and a half amps per plug. It's a 20 amp circuit, 16 amp continuous. So huge overhead. And this is a 14 gauge cable, which on 240 volts, especially feeding into a 750 watt power supply. It's 
crazy overhead. Here's my intake side, movers just like on the exhaust. I didn't trim this out. I'm gonna put sound baffling in here to minimize how much noise radiates out. But uh, working pretty well. I had a little accumulation of uh, outside gook on this screening here, so I'm not sure the best way to deal with that. I'm thinking I'll probably cut it out and have a snap-in external filter that's easily removable and washable, but we'll see. And here's my power feed, as well as the data. Um, I need to put the little snappy and the keystone things on there and um, get that terminated, but whatever, not a big deal. This is a 125 amp sub panel um, fed by number one aluminum wire um, on a 100 amp breaker. So it could run at around 80, 90 amps continuously. Uh, wouldn't want to do that, but um, these are the breakers servicing the 620 outlets. They're not all terminated right now, and they have 15 amp breakers on 120 volt outlets for fans and you know whatever monitors and stuff like that. Um, so this works pretty good. You know, I got the wires feeding out of the bottom. It does a pretty good job. Um, brings me enough power that uh, this room can't really cool much more than that. And I only have 200 amp service on my house, so I wouldn't want to draw more than around. 20 some kilowatts anyways continuously because with various other loads my house can only draw around 42 to 48 kilowatts peak um, and I don't really want to run it full bore continuously it's residential service but overall that's my room um, I'll keep you updated as I get things done uh, but for now it's running pretty well it's doing its job I'm pretty happy with it a few tweaks here and there I need to finish up the rigs finish up the sound dampening because it's a little louder than I would like for my neighbors but they didn't complain yet not too bad and um, yeah we'll see how it goes